The military junta in Myanmar, also known as Burma, is intensifying its attacks against Christians and other ethnic minorities. Chuck Holton recently witnessed the brutal crackdown, which included airstrikes and artillery assaults on Christian civilians. He brings us this report as he accompanied the Free Burma Rangers into the combat zone. Deep in the mountains of eastern Burma, gunfire echoes through Christian villages. The Burmese army is driving thousands from their homes as it seeks to crush opposition to the 2021 coup. Rebel armies, though, are slowly liberating village after village. Right now, we are attacking to Laiko, the capital city of the Korean state. Before that, the, the Burma army put in their troops surrounding Laiko because Laiko is the, the main command center of all their troops. So we are right now attacking to Laiko, their main center. So we are pushing them back. So they have to fall back all the time. For years, the Burmese army has committed atrocities against civilians, deliberately targeting churches and other religious sites. The people living in these villages in the mountains of Burma still live pretty primitive lives. You can tell by the huts that they live in. They're just made of split bamboo. Most of them don't have electricity or running water. And so you might be surprised to find a giant Baptist church built on the top of the hill in this very remote place in the mountains of Burma. But that's because most of these hill tribes are actually Christian. They were converted to Christianity by the very first Baptist missionary, Adoniram Judson, in the end of the 19th century. And that's one of the reasons why there has been this conflict ongoing between them and the Buddhist military junta who controls the country. This church and this village lost over 100 homes burned and destroyed and over 100 landmines found, including in the church property, including in the church. Despite the danger, the NGO called the Free Burma Rangers is using its resources to evacuate civilians and deliver life-saving relief. During the mission, Burmese MiG fighter jets supplied by Russia hunted the group. So we have a recon plane flying over, trying to find this convoy, I'm pretty sure. We've been going this all day. Thank you. Normally they fly, they'll, after that will come airstrikes, airplanes. And then these planes can also drop mortars. Many of the minority groups have taken up arms, resisting the dictatorship for decades. Now their aging weaponry is no match for the junta's modern arsenal. So this is an M16A1 rifle. And you can tell how old it is by looking at all the bluing is rubbed off of the upper here. And these things were probably left behind at the end of the Vietnam War. That's how old they are. But you can tell if you look inside here that the chamber is clean and well oiled. Uh, these guys, this is life or death for them. And so they take very good care of their weapons. As the conflict rages, these resilient ethnic groups remain determined to resist military rule, and many believe the goal is finally in reach. Chuck is back from Burma and joins us with more insights. Chuck, you've been with the Karen and Kareni in Burma on many occasions, and I spent a lot of time with them in Burma and Thailand in the 1990s. They have war, then short periods of peace, then war again. So what has changed for them in the past 30, 35 years? Anything? Oh, yes, it's changed quite a bit, actually. And actually, this is a completely different war. So in 2021, the Burmese military junta overthrew the democratically elected government of Aung San Suu Kyi. And when they did that, then they got this enormous uh, protest movement among your everyday Burmese people who heretofore had not had anything to do with the conflict that was mostly between the Burma army and the hill tribe people in the north. So when the everyday Burmese citizen got involved and started what's called the PDF, People's Defense Forces, what happened was all of these military uh, militias uh, of all the different hill tribes joined the PDF and they're now united against the Burmese government. The Burmese government cracked down very, very harshly on the people 
And that is what started this new phase of the Civil War, which has been going on for more than 70 years. Well, there are always the naysayers who reject the argument that Christians are singled out. They say the military government is an equal opportunity oppressor, fighting anyone who resists their rule. But I testified before Congress back in 97 and said the Burmese troops destroy Christian churches and leave the Buddhist temples alone when they go into these villages. Uh, so what have you learned about these attacks? That's true. I traveled very extensively throughout Sean State, and I saw a lot of Christian churches. In, most of the Christian churches are in Karen and Karenni states. You get into Sean State, you have a lot more Burmese temples. Uh, I saw Almost every church that I saw was uh, damaged or destroyed, very, very few that were not, uh, but I only saw one Burmese temple that had uh, been hit with an errant mortar round uh, and that had any damage at all. The rest were completely left alone. So there is a religious component to this that's been the much more longstanding than the current civil conflict. It's just that the conflict has expanded to include all the citizens since 2021. And I know it was very dangerous for you there on the front lines as Burmese fighter jets bombed the area daily. You had to take shelter in a drainage ditch, other places. So what difference did it make being with the Free Burma Rangers and other Christians in that situation? Well, the Burmese military has a very big price on our heads. And so everywhere we went, we had to be concerned about spies who would give us up to the Burmese military. Uh, pretty much everywhere we went, especially as we got into Sean State, uh, the Free Burma Rangers were being hounded by uh, reconnaissance aircraft from the Burma Army and then fighter jets. So the reconnaissance aircraft would show up, fly around for a couple of hours. If they spotted us, they would call in fighter jets to strike at us. And so whenever we saw the the surveillance aircraft overhead, we had to hide our vehicles, hide our, ourselves, and sometimes sit there for hours undercover uh, until that thing had to fly away to get gas before we could move again. Okay, Chuck Colton, we're looking forward to your next report on the hospital there. Appreciate your exclusive and enterprising reports from World Hotspots. Stay safe. Thank you, and God bless you. You too.